Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Ian bringing you another video in this AI series with the new Boston. So in the past videos, we've talked a lot about OpenAI, ChatGPT, 3.5 Turbo, GPT-4. We've also discussed how to use Prompt Layer. In this video, we're going to introduce a different LLM from a company called Anthropic, or maybe it's Anthropic. I'm not sure. In any event, their LLM or large language model is called Claude 2. In fact, their latest version is 2.1. In this video, we're going to introduce you to Claude 2 with the legacy completion syntax, just so you're familiar with it in case you come across it in a code base or if you're already using it in your own code base. And then in the next video, we'll show you how to migrate to the newer version of the LLM Claude 2.1 using the newer API called the Messages API. So the implementation and usage of this API is really simple. So simple, in fact, that we're going to wire it up into Prompt Layer right away so that we can, of course, keep track of all of our prompts and their responses. So let's take a look at this code. Let's see what's going on. Let's run it. And then let's check Prompt Layer to make sure that the tracking is in order. So the first thing to know is that you do have to have an API key for Anthropic. So you're going to go to their website, sign up, get API access, generate that key, and then you're going to export it. And so the value that you're going to export it as is just going to be Anthropic API key with underscores. So Anthropic underscore API underscore key. So set that as an environment variable. However, you set up environment variables on your computer or in your project and point that to your secret key that you get from Anthropic. The next thing we're going to do is inside of our main.py file, we're going to import prompt layer. So then we're going to pull Anthropic from prompt layer. So we say Anthropic is equal to prompt layer dot Anthropic. Now we're going to generate a client from Anthropic dot Anthropic. You'll notice that the second Anthropic here has a capital A. So make sure that you put that there and then we're going to invoke this. So open close parentheses and the result of that, the object that gets returned is going to be our client assigned to our client variable. Now we can do things like access the completions API through this SDK. So we're going to say completion is equal to, and then we're going to use that client and we're going to call its completions method or object, which has a create method on it. So client.completions.create, and then it's just going to take a handful of arguments here. The first argument is our prompt. So you'll notice we use an F string here and we plug in something called anthropic human prompt. And then at the end, we have another string injected from anthropic.ai prompt. I'll talk about what those are and why we need them here in a moment. The next thing is just indicating which model we're going to use. So in this video, we're using Claude-2, but in future videos, we'll migrate to Claude-2.1. Then, of course, max tokens. In this case, they call it max tokens to sample. So you should be familiar with that concept from our OpenAI videos. But essentially, we just want to control how many tokens are used with this request response cycle. At the end here, we're going to print the whole completion object that comes back. And then we're going to drill down into it a little bit and print the completion.completion .completion object that comes back from that. So let's go ahead and save this file and run our code. So I have my virtual environment activated for this AI Playground project. And I have, of course, all my dependencies installed. We're ready to go to run Python main.py. Uh, first, I want to cd into, where are we over here, anthropic examples, and then the first folder here, zero, 01 basic. So inside of here, I've got main.py. I'm going to run main.py with Python 3. So the prompt was the same one that we used way back in the beginning, weeks and weeks ago, whenever we introduced uh, ChatGPT or OpenAI's GPT API. And that was, we just asked which NHL team plays in Pittsburgh. So National Hockey League. And the response that we get back here is, you can see here's the completion object, the entire thing. It's got a bit of information here, like the ID, and then this completion string, and then some other things in here, like type, stop, log ID, and so on. After that, we're actually logging the completion completion, which is just the string, the content uh, that comes back. So the answer here is the Pittsburgh Penguins are the NHL team that plays in Pittsburgh. And then it actually goes on and says quite a bit more. They play their home games at the PPG Paints Arena. They have won five Stanley Cup championships and so on and so forth. We didn't actually ask it to give us that information. So you can already see that it's kind of overcompensating and it's just going to be up to us to prompt it in such a way that makes it to where it doesn't give us too much information if that's not what we want. So we'll show you how to do that in future videos with the system prompt. But for now, we're just going to focus on getting this functionality working and making sure that it's being tracked over in prompt layer. 
So let's head over to prompt layer and you can see at the top here, I have this brand new history for Claude 2. And if I click on it, you can see that the human prompt was which NHL team, which NHL team plays in Pittsburgh. And then the assistant response was the one that we just read. You can see our max tokens. We can see how many tokens were used. So it only used 79. And then you can see our cost and our latency here. You can even see that it's using anthropic anthropic .create. So in the future, when we migrate to the messaging API, you'll see that it uses messages instead of completion. Also, we can see that we're using Claude 2 model. Again, that will change once we migrate to 2.1. So back over in our code, the last thing I want to talk about before we get out of here is the prompting formatting. So there is a validation that occurs when you send your completions request over to the Anthropic API. It's going to look at your prompt string and it's going to ensure that it's written a certain way. So what it's looking for at the very beginning is either backslash in, backslash in, so the return statement, double return statement, and then human with a colon to indicate that what comes after that is the human prompt or likewise, it's gonna look for backslash in, backslash in, assistant, all caps for human, all caps for assistant, and then a colon. So what that'll look like is this. It'll be backslash in, backslash in, and then human, and then some prompt. And then backslash in, backslash in, assistant, and then some prompt. And you're just gonna alternate back and forth between human and assistant, human and assistant. Well, rather than having to type that out yourself, and assuming that they might make changes to it in the future, we actually pull that from the SDK itself. So you see, we have Anthropic up here inside of this F string, which just allows us to inject a variable or an expression into our string. We have Anthropic.Human underscore prompt as a constant variable. So that's actually going to give us that double backslash in and then human for the human prompt. And likewise, for the AI prompt, there's backslash in, backslash in, assistant, colon, stored inside of anthropic.ai underscore prompt. So if you don't do this correctly, then you'll get an error back because it is passing through a layer of validation. It's looking to ensure that you do it correctly. Now, if you have you know, a missing backslash in, or maybe you have a space in there, it will try to correct it for you but you definitely should not rely on that because it could change in the future and then you could find that your code is breaking. The easiest solution is just to remember to pull those values from these constant variables that they have available within the client and to make sure that you put them at the beginning and at the end of your prompt. So that's the formatting for sending your prompts. And then of course, you're just going to send this through, get your response back, parse through the response, print out the actual completion, which is the text that you're looking for and do whatever you want with it. You can create an ongoing conversation if you want to. It's a little bit easier to do when you're using the messages API versus the completions API. So we'll talk about that in the next video. But for now, what we've talked about is how to get up and running really quickly with Anthropic's Claude 2 API and to link it into prompt layer so that we can track all of our prompts and see whatever data we need about those prompts. Thanks a lot for joining us in this video. Can't wait to see you all in the next one. Until then, peace.